Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome <clears throat> to this is strange because we technically created characters uh, and started the game in an unrecorded session, but this is the first recorded session of a Dragon Age uh, hack I'm working on. It's based on the excellent Hearts of Woolen, uh, created by Lil Francis, who's who's here. So uh, I'm really happy. Uh, we're all gonna be playing this. I mainly made this game, <laughs> I realized in four days, because I was upset about how long I'd have to wait for Dragon Age um, <laughs> to come out as a game. So yeah, uh, let's start with uh, introducing our characters. It's been a while since we played, so this will help us all remember. And of course, we're gonna start with Sherry. Sherry always goes first in, <laughs> in all things. It's because I take the first slot on the character sheet. True, so true, true. my name is Sherry. I use she, her pronouns. I am playing Alice, who also uses she, her pronouns. Her role in the game is mage. She is a mage from the circle. And in fact, she is a former tranquil. Um, but she has been able to overcome that once she came back home to Ferelden. Um, She still has the mark in the man, so people may uh, think that she's still tranquil but in fact she has gained some small set of her power back but the power is different now what is near and dear to her and in many ways is what helped her get past that um, state of being tranquil was her mabari um is was her family's mabari and it is her boon companion now um, and that's rudri or ru um, he is a lovely and classic Mabari and loyal to a fault. He led her to a spirit and that spirit uh, helped her. Um, so uh, she is, so I think that's the big things. Um, she's, uh, she prefers Castine um, in, in our entanglements, uh, but Rue loves Gunter, so it is always dragging me over to him. And generally, um, I've seen the agent of my former lover watching Hara, so I don't know what is up with that. Awesome, awesome. Do you already have an idea for which entanglement you want to highlight for today's Oof. session, or should we come back to you? I don't know. I like the idea. I know Gunter's going to get into trouble right away, so I think having it be Gunter is probably a great idea. So it's true, it's true. That means I can throw myself into danger as well. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to explain or this after character creation, but, uh, but yes, uh, our <laughs> Gunter is standing in front of a pride demon that just stepped out of a Tevinter uh, mage. No big deal. We'll, we'll get into <laughs> the proper summary after. Okay, and then uh, next let's meet Haro, played by Patrick. Hi, I'm Patrick Keehim, uh, and I'm playing uh, Haro, because he and they, uh, and also they in a plural sense as well. Um, Haro used to be another person with a different name and a different life, but that life hurt him enough that he was willing to give up parts of it, part of his mind, parts of his soul even, to this voice in the night that promised him power and comfort and uh, for, uh, forgetting in return. Um, and that voice turned out to be one of the old gods, uh, a spirit from the Fade that had held on to its power for endless millennia, who knows? Um, but I went with the, uh, major, uh, apostate, um, and let's see, and connected with, uh, the, the Red Jenny faction, uh, mostly because with little, like, whispers and bits of luck, I can just find my way into a lot of their stashes, and so I just sort of got invited in because they assumed I was one of them because I knew where all the stashes were. Um, makes sense, makes sense. Yep, yep. Uh, that's, that's uh, most of it. It's been a while since we played this. Yeah, so no worries. It's okay. It's okay. Um, it's, it's, it's the nature <laughs> of the game. We, we had to survive holidays and um, the birthing of 2021 in order to get here. So it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, do you have an idea for which entanglement you'd like to highlight or should we come back to you on that? Um, I, I remember last time we did a bit of the, everybody loves Castine. Um, so <laughs> why don't we take a look at, at, uh, Genevieve, uh, 
Cassine's sister who might be working with demons or might be inhabited by one or might just in general be a bad person we don't know. Right. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then uh, next, uh, Lowell, who's playing Castine. So I am playing Castine, the main character of the story. <laughs> and uh, I am a uh, Orlesian human and mercenary captain. I have an order that uh, sort of follows me and my lieutenant with me here on this ship. And generally, I uh, try to uh, make it a habit and a policy to murder people who don't think about the consequences, which in most cases has been Orlesian nobles, Red Jennies, those sorts of folks, mostly nobles though. Um, and uh, that's, that is what I am. I am, I am amazing. <coughs> I am striking. I have a great emerald eye, beautiful in my, my head. And uh, uh, right now, I think what's still worrying me is the uh, 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 issue of my sister Genevieve uh, and realizing that uh, she was involved with the tranquilizing or tranquiling of uh, Eyeless. Uh, and uh, I really worked hard to help people last time, but they still got into trouble. Um, that's, that's a terrible thing. So hopefully we'll take care of this uh, demon and or at least I'll be able to root cheer for the people who are taking care of these situations. Absolutely. Right. The, the, the last session ended with Kestine asking, what did you tell him? <laughs> or what did you say to him? That was so good. I was so sad I did record that. Oh, yeah, okay. That was, wasn't it? <laughs> what did you say to him? Because <laughs> you, you said something to him and then he turned into a monster. And people on Twitter were telling me, so people try to talk to other people. Do demons always come out in your games? I'm like, no, <laughs> just sometimes. <laughs> I have other tricks. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, the man of the hour, uh, Matthew, uh, who's playing Gunter. <laughs> so Matthew, tell right. us about yourself and Gunter. Okay, yeah, uh, Gunter, um, Gunter is a, um, I'm trying to remember all my characters have so been well, so long, but basically he's a, a deem, uh, um, he fan he pulls postures as a rogue, as a bard, as a mercenary, never do well. But he's actually um, using that as a cover to um, hunt demons and uh, uh, take out other supernatural abominations. Uh, I think for this session, I would like to highlight my romantic entanglement um, with Eilis and hopefully also uh, bring about the um, bring in some of the friction or uh, pressures from Loren as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so this is a good time to, uh, and for me too, to remember all our uh, NPCs on the board. So we have a captain. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Because everyone is currently uh, on a ship from Antiva on the way to uh, Ferelden. Um, I do remember that Harrow is supposed to meet someone specifically. Uh, they're not sure why, if I recall correctly. That's right. I, I'm, I'm on the like, oh, there's my camera. Thank you. Um, <laughs> if I turned it off sometimes, it just never wants to come back. Um, but yeah, I, I, I had made a, a deal or like I'd seen something about there's someone here that I'm supposed to meet uh, on the side of the trip. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And at the same time, uh, Castine also with Norel, there's a mark that they have to hunt down uh, once we reach land, which could be the same person. We're not sure yet um, on how that's going to shake out. Uh, but yeah, so currently you are on board a ship. <laughs> I'll get to the zombies in a bit. Uh, and <laughs> uh, so we have a captain. Uh, they're only known as captain. Um, you're able to tell that they were former Sarabas, basically a former mage from the Canary. Uh, so their only name is captain. 
Uh, and Narelle, uh, very fashionable, uh, Justine's lieutenant. Um, and we have Genevieve, uh, Castine's sister. Oh, we don't have a picture for Loren yet. Okay, I have to really do that. We also have Nadine, the first mate. Oh, right, the noble chaser. That's right. Castine and the There's Nadine. There's a little almost. fallout with that <laughs> last time with Harrow and such. <laughs> almost a thing uh and then we have joanna well i have to we'll also have to get a picture for oh sir henry who, who hasn't shown up yet but um our templar who's connected to our triangle so that's who we have on the board so far uh in terms of npcs and uh as for what happened last time so we started off in the ship uh Gunter was able to wow the crowd. What is that background? Did he put the cats in the background? I'm trying to concentrate here. <laughs> I'm trying to recall what happened weeks ago. <laughs> okay, that's Chassie and Vernon. They're adorable. Okay, so <laughs> I also just played replayed that part of Dragon Age Origins where the demon possessed a cat that looks like Vernon. So that's not. <laughs> anyway, um, so. On a ship, Gunter was able to impress everyone uh, with a beautiful display of, uh, of singing and, and legend. I think that was the last time Gunter did well, though. After that, it kind of went um, downhill from there. <laughs> and uh, from there, Harrow also had this moment with Castine where there was this this hint of prophecy between, like you knew that if Nadine and Castine uh, were to follow through, it has nothing to do with how you feel about Castine, of course. It's purely no, no. Prophecy, it's, it's this is know. just prophecy. This is just what I see of the future. I can't help what's true. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and Castine uh, did did connect to Nadine uh, on a on a very uh, intimate level, but we'll see what what becomes of it. Um, and of course, it was at around this time, uh, you know, I think that was a result of a miss. So not only do demons show up, but you know, a whole, a whole ship full of like um, undead uh, showed up from a ghost ship. Uh, there was a Tevinter mage. I want to say the front part of the ship, I forgot what it's called, bow, helm, the Titanic area, kinda. Prow? Prow, there you go. <laughs> There's so many points. <laughs> exactly it, exactly it. So we if saw- we, If we kept naming you. parts, eventually we would get to one that sounded like it would be right. <laughs> Prow's name? Things, things I don't want to hear a doctor say, right? <laughs> we keep naming the, things. <laughs> the, star, the, the starboard port? <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, um, so- now I'm thinking about transformers that transform into ships. In. Okay, focus. Uh, so, <laughs> Matthew's screaming behind the mute. <clears throat> anyway, um, and so uh, we had our heroes uh, in true Dragon Age fashion valiantly combat uh, and face these terrors. Both of our mages were able to face down the zombie horde. Harrow, in particular, had to deal with a larger version uh, of the undead, but Harrow did really well, you know, just tearing through the veil very uh, casually in order to rain down elemental I mean, it was fury. Like, it was just in the way. I needed a bunch of power, and that power was over there, but there was this obnoxious veil thing in between, so I just got rid of that. That is exactly what people in Dragon Age say. I'm just going to point that out. Like That is exactly how people talk in Inquisition. <laughs> just get rid of the veil and get the power. Um, but yes. And so uh, Gunter made his way to the other side of the ship. Castine uh, was uh, assisting through, through her dagger in order to get the attention of the Tevinter Mage in order to make sure Gunter could uh, use his silver tongue in order to get through through the mage. It looked like it almost worked, it, except the pride demon uh, forced the mage to remember that a deal had been struck of some kind. And so, uh, which meant tearing apart the mage 
revealing the pride demon who's about how tall would you say a pride demon is, Matthew? Because I'm bad with like actual pride measurements. Demon is, uh, six and a half. Just seven feet? Because like they tend to tower over you though. Yeah, most, most people in oh, you're muted, my love. Only I'm, I'm the only one who can hear you because <laughs> we're in the same house. The, but aren't most people in the ancient times like five? 10 at most. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want a game theory episode. Let's not get into it. Let's not get into it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but a really huge. Oh, you know what? I should I should pull up a picture of a pride demon just so. And screen share that. Let's say yes. eight foot. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But this is what they look yeah, like. Yeah, a more appropriate background. Yeah, nice. Good job, good job. But yeah, so pride demons are generally... Oh, pride demons. My brain thought of a different kind of demon. Mm. You're talking about the big bully ones. Yeah. Oh, this one's so cute. You were thinking of the prejudice demons. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they tend to be really, really huge. Uh, but yeah, so that Those was... Are nine, mm -hmm. nine or ten feet. Oh, sorry, you're still muted, love. Those guys are about nine or 10 feet then at least. Yeah, okay. So to set up the scene again, uh, and, and the pride demon has this huge bellowing laugh that echoes, like you can see the, the ship that it's on, like it creaks and responds and moves. Uh, and even though uh, most of the undead have been dealt with, they're, they're blackened, thick blood staining the deck of the ship that you're on. Um, you can see that the pride demon is, uh, they turn around behind them. And Harrow, you recognize what it looks like when someone is trying to tear through the veil, since you're familiar with it yourself. And you can see that the pride demon is trying to, he's pulling down his fist and you can see the veil buckling all around him. He's trying to call uh, reinforcements. And so, Gunter, you're in a pretty, pretty bad spot. Um, I'd say it also makes sense for you to mark an element uh, in the face of all of this. Oh, sorry, approach. I'm talking hearts of women. So uh, which approach would you like to mark I for think, Gunter? I think, uh, what's the element again? Bloodstone. I'm going to open the cage. No worries. No worries. Do you want me to put in the uh, link again? No, I have it up here. Don't worry about that. Sure, sure. I'm just trying to remember what the names were. Bloodstone, Bloodstone Fade, yeah. and Wild. Yeah, I think Ooh. like how are I you think... feeling basically in response yeah. to the pride demon showing up and oh and you're probably covered in like dragon age kind of gore because the guy was split in front of you so i think that makes i sense. would say i get uh i get hit by fade so that would be more like uncertain oh i like that yeah 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 very good yeah i, I really love this stuff from parts of i am marking the condition okay 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 all right. And so, Castine, you are our main character. Uh, what does Castine do in response uh, to the pride demon showing up? <laughs> I'm going to unmute myself first. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, I'm going to move uh, to try and get Gunter some room between himself and the pride demon. So I would like to attempt to back Gunter up, comfort and support, uh, and uh, 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 move move them away. Ooh, yeah, that sounds good. All right, so what approach are you taking? Let's see here. Uh, so I think uh, I, this is terrifying. Uh, so I'm going to be rolling blood. Ooh, um, nice, nice. Um, and a modifier plus one. That is a 10. Look at that. Truly the main character. Um. So <laughs> I will give, I, I will take a bond with Gunter and Gunter may have a bond with me. Ooh. And then I'll uh, when when Gunter goes, I'll, I'll I'll I may spend that to assist them. Absolutely. So we see, uh, we see Castian jump towards the ship, move in front of Gunter, uh, 
give him the space he needs. Uh, and so how about Eilis? What do you do in response? Your Mabari, uh, Rue was able to like chomp through a lot of these undead. Uh, in fact, he, he turns to you very proud of himself, like little mm -hmm. tail mm -hmm. wagging, like I did a good job. He did. He did a good job. But I do see that um, that the pride demon is going to summon more from the fade. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think that um, I want to cast some magic, but essentially I almost want to like tranquilize that space, if that makes any sense. I want to to thicken the border right there, to blind him to what is behind him. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this sounds like overcome. I feel. Yeah, I think I think yeah, that's nice, a nice. good way of putting it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I think that I also know the fade, um, but I particularly know what it is to be separated from it. So I am bringing down the curtain. Oh, nice. Um, so let's see here. Oh, but the roll room is. I have the link. Sorry, sorry. I'm an idiot. No, it's okay. It's okay. Here, do you want me to put the link in again? Oh, no, you don't need to. I found it. Nice, you just nice, have nice. to do it. I hadn't done it first. I apologize. No, it's okay. Take your time. All right. So I'm rolling 2d6. I'm going to add two to it. Uh, I rolled that. Give me five. That gives me seven. So, okay. Phew, 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 phew. Okay. phew yeah. Not <laughs> awful. Not perfect, great, perfect. but not awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, so, I mean, technically a miss isn't bad. I just get nervous in front of a pride demon, you know? Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> okay, so overcome uh, on a seven to nine. Ooh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so when you do something under pressure roll, uh, on a seven to nine, there's a complication. I'll present you a worse outcome or a hard choice. Uh, yeah, let's see. You can also choose not to accept the outcome or cost and instead simply fail your attempt. So okay. I will say, um, what does it look like when you tranquilize the space? Like, do you step forward? Are you sending I, your energy I, outwards? Yeah, I think one of the things is, is she's been tranquil for so long that she still doesn't have any real sense of, of how should we say, consequences, um, if that makes any sense. And I right, think she right. does step forward and she's particularly... Um, like she does this and he, certainly the pride demon knows exactly what she's doing. Um, if that makes any sense. I have, I have no, no problem with being to him at least particularly clear that mm -hmm. she's the source of that difficulty for him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think uh, as you push that outwards, you feel like harrow on your end, the sensation, the tranquility that Eilis uh, is pushing out there. You can feel the old God soul starting to like shift and move and split away from you in this really uncomfortable, there's no way that they can oh, actually I be I don't like that. removed, but it's this horrible sensation of, it's like as if it's trying to force the old God back to sleep. Uh, so, Eilis, you'll be able to do this, but the price is that Harrow is going to have to mark an approach. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> that is terrible. Do I know this? I think uh, you can you can sense this for sure. In fact, when you look towards Harrow, there's almost a moment like you can see their face, like there's this line of, of energy that's drawn and you can see the split starting to happen and you can see your the tranquil energy entering uh through their eyes so but you know it is working in front of the pride demon it is weakening his hold on the veil so i do this she sees that happening and she steps over to haro and she puts his he her hand on his cheek like she's apologizing but she keeps on doing it <laughs> <laughs> Are we okay with this, Harold? Yeah, well, uh, I, I'm okay with it, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, Harold, Harold, I think, is Harold's very like unhappy you. with everything. <laughs> okay, as long as Patrick's happy. <laughs> yeah. That's the... All right, so which approach are you going to mark? Uh... Um... 
uh, I think blood. I, I think he's scattered and like his brain is not connecting with things right anymore right now. <laughs> Sorry. I was just watching the cat's butt take over all of the video. <laughs> What's that, our cat? Uh, yes. Which one Sorry, was it, Matthew? It, it was Cassie, and the thing is, the, the, the green screen effect was interfering with his white fur. <laughs> so you could see like part of the background on his body, except for the orange fur. It was just, anyway. Okay, I need to watch quality, that replay. Quality YouTube content, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Just some psychedelic cat bomb. That's all. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but so, Eilis, because you push on and you you know what's at stake here, uh, the pride demon starts losing his hold. You see reality around him start to reassert itself. But the pride demon turns to look at you, Eilis, uh, and knows that you are the source of what's stopping him from being able to do what he wants to do. And so Gunter, what do you do when you see the pride demon, like he sort of gathers himself and he leaps up into the air to smash down onto the ship right in front of Eilis, away from you and Kaskian. Yeah. Um, You're muted, my love. I... Chassie. Am I unmuted now? Yes, I'm unmuted now. Uh, let's see. Um, I have been waiting for my moment to... This is your moment. Um, your chance to prove you're the main character, not Kesney. <laughs> uh, I will... Is it... I'm wondering, like, so he's leaping into the air or something? Right, and he's crashed down in front of Eilis. Okay, so what I do is I roll... Uh, Gunter rolls into the path of the... Between Eilis and uh, the Pride Demon. Pride Demon, right? Oh, <laughs> amazing. Mm. So you're using your dualist ability, is that right? Or? Yes, and I asked the pride demon, because the, the demons in Dragon Age, even though you fight a lot of them that don't talk to you, they're actually conversant, am I right? Yeah, because in Origins, they, my geek is going to show. Uh, yeah, in Origins, they, 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 every demon talks a lot. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just putting in more talking again. That was my only problem with Inquisition. You didn't really get to talk to most of the demons. Yeah, and you killed a lot of demons. Um, yeah, I guess that's why. <laughs> uh, so I challenge it and say, and I ask them a question that they must answer honestly. And I say, um, Wait, you know, but before you go further, I will let you know if you, it means you'll have to go into combat with them and they are above your scale. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay, okay. Just wanted to be clear. Just wanted to put that out there. So you ask them. Um, what will, what will it, um, how can I get him to depart this, this realm and go back where he came from? So I have to ask, because you did not write it down in your character sheet, my love, what weapon are you using? Um, using shorts, uh, I'd say two short swords. Nice, yeah. nice. I just want to see the hero shot. Uh, in yeah. my mind. So you have your two short swords drawn out. You ask that question. The the pride demon lets out a chuckle and its many eyes open and close as it studies you for a moment. And it says, I see. Well, if you give me what I came here for, then I will leave. I want to come, I, I, I've come here to take the one chosen by the spirits. And he's looking straight at Eilis. Mm -hmm. And I say, uh, woo. I say, you know, I, I, I just say, you know, well, um, the, sp uh, the spirits are going to have to wait and um, take the fight to him. Okay, so he is above your scale. Uh, I'm, I'm categorically, absolutely, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, don't worry. Soon you'll be able to beat up pride demons together, but for now, he's like... <laughs> yeah. Um, 
when you fight against a worthy for a role plus defining approach, if its scale is higher, yeah. No, no. If the scale is the same, if the scale is yes, yeah, so if the is above the scale, yeah. yeah, you lose the conflict, right? Yeah. But uh, on a hit, you may declare how you lose, and on a seven to nine, you mark an element. So there is that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So what uh -huh. approach are you going to take, my love? Um, I am going to take the approach of stone. I actually don't know if I'm good at that, but I think that is the trying trying to maintain like a steadfast uh, barrier between the demon and Eilis. Ooh, okay, that is a plus one, so not bad. Oh wait, do I roll now? Yes, we're all waiting, we're all staring at you. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> 2d6 plus one. What, what's my step? Plus one. Plus right? one, yeah. All right. Try the, the windows, the tabs in this thing are a little slow. So. Yeah, no worries. It's so totally cool. Mm -hmm. Done. All right. We're rolling. That is a seven. Yeah, seven's not bad. So, uh, which means on a, on a hit, you still get to declare how you lose and you just have to mark, oh, let me, let me change that. It still says element approach. Oh, okay. So uh, tell me what uh, approach you're going to mark and tell me how you lose. You get to like completely describe this combat as much as you'd like. Um, I think what, uh, since, since Gunter is smaller, he would try to go for a quick dash of the the legs, sort of like doing this um, fast flurry around um, that area and creating small nicks and, and, and jabs. And I think um, what happens is the pride demon will, the pride demon can, can wield energy, am I right? Well, yeah, it, it, he's trying to break through the veil, but uh, Isla stopped him from doing so. But yeah, yeah, he has like, I'll go ahead and describe it, like these huge energy whips and then like come crashing down onto the ground, yes. splitting through the ship. Yeah. Yeah, so what happens is um, when, he, when as Gunter is jumping around uh, doing that, the pride demons um, sort of like electric -y whips sort of lash out and grab him in one of his, in, while Gunter is in midair and then throws him to the opposite side of the ship. I like it, I like it. Since you get to choose uh, how you lose, do you want to say that you look especially handsome for Eyeless in this moment, or? <laughs> um, what, I will add a little touch of nuance to that. And not just handsome, because that's, that's Gunder all the time. Um, <laughs> no, um, when he like gets knocked on the side, um, you can see like he has a pained expression that look, that is particularly beautiful and delicious. Noted for fan fiction for AO3. Yes. Got it. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I would. Yeah. You know, we're, we're sorry, we're talking, we're talking, babe, we're talking uh, that guy from, the guy we like from, from, from VTube who goes, <laughs> Oh, ask the VTube. <laughs> We'll tell him later about it. Yeah. <laughs> you were saying, Castine? I would then like to carry out the second part of my plan. Okay, That's yes, plan. yes. Which is, since Gunter has been holding their attention for a bit, that's where I, all my, the people I have on board have been getting into position. At that point, I'll snap to have them let loose with their volleys at this thing. Uh, uh, in uh, an attempt to lower this thing's scale. Very nice, very nice. Uh, and you're using your mercenary captain move, correct? Yes, I am. And I am. This is this is my my focus. So I'm going to roll with stone for this one. Wow, it's almost like Lowell really understands the system. <laughs> almost, almost. It's almost like I oh. used you as a sacrifice to get what I want. Oh. I mean, anyway, <laughs> hmm. I wonder who I wonder who 
I wonder who designed a system that this, this, this beautiful thing game. is based on. Yeah, this beautiful game is based on. Oh, I am burning two bonds. Uh, oh, 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 what did we, what did we roll? Uh, one, I see. One with the one I already built with Gunter, because this is essentially using yeah. that. Uh, but then I'm also burning uh, the bond uh, with uh, Harrow because Harrow already put me in an inconvenient position earlier and I don't want to embarrass myself in front of them. Absolutely. That would be a sign of weakness. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, essentially they, they the, the people I have on board, including my lieutenant, uh, uh, stand to, they've had a few seconds to get the bows and things ready and they will launch a volley of, of arrows uh, from the, the high points into this thing uh, to uh, render it more vulnerable to further assault. Absolutely. Okay, and so Harrow, you see this happening. Uh, what are you going to do? You see that the, oh. the pride demon is full of like arrows at this point. Gunter is like, like, you know, hair down, you know, that kind of crumpled, beautiful oh, mess. On. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and Hera was very focused on, you know, what was going on and this danger with the pride demon. And then someone started playing with the power supply to his soul. Uh, and I think Hera's a bit distracted. Um, so I'm sorry, Sherry, but also not even a little bit sorry. Um, as <laughs> Hera has like dropped to his knees beside you where you put your hand on his cheek. Uh, and he looks up at you and you're used to the sort of like dull swirling glow of colors coming from his eyes. Uh, and you see that, that, that light and the light of like his, his weird shifting tattoos, they sort of sputter and, and burn out. And you're looking down into Harrow's like completely human eyes, maybe for the first time as he reaches up his hand and grabs your hand looking up in your face genuinely with this tone of like trying to comfort you as he says don't worry don't worry Eilis it won't be a pride demon that drags your soul back across the realm into the fade um and I want to reveal a shade of someone's destiny to them Yay. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> You're um, so good at using this move, Patrick. I'm so happy. <laughs> yes. I was going to do other things, but then it just had to get complicated. So I was like, oh, I can do complicated. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Um, so uh, I, I, I think it's going to be wild. Um, it's that sort of like uncontrolled magic sort of lashing out and, and hooking onto things that he doesn't mean it to right now. Seven, eight, nine. Ooh, okay, on a nine. Do you want it to stand at nine or do you want to burn uh, a bond to hit 10? Yeah, my only bond was with Genevieve right now. I don't, I don't really feel like that fits at the moment. No worries, no worries. Okay, so uh, on a seven to nine, you also row inner conflict over what you're not telling them. So what are you not telling? <laughs> Is it going to be you that drags her? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'm not sure, but I think I'm definitely there. Like you're Could you be any more complicated? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so mark XP and let's roll in a conflict. <laughs> um, uh, I guess this would be stone, caution, and, and trying to bite my tongue on saying a little bit too much. Makes sense. That's a six. So mark another XP. Um, I will. I will get into what happens on that list in a bit. 
Um, I promise the pride team is not going to come out of someone else. I promise. Uh, but first, <laughs> before that, you get to choose because you still technically reveal a shade of their destiny on a hit. So are you going to halt their current action that we're not sure what uh, Ilus's current action is? Clear an approach for you or them? Make them answer a question or drive them off? I want to make Ilus answer a question. How does she fear it's all going to end? In silence? In cotton? In unfeeling? Mm. That you'll become tranquil again or something similar? Something similar or even worse. Though she doesn't know mm. how to imagine that. Yeah, and I think, Harrow, you, you receive, like, you can see and feel in your mind what it's like to be in that space, to be cut off from your emotions, to no longer feel them, to have memories, but not understand why you felt the way you did back then, because you have no access to that anymore. I just replay the part um, of Origins where the Tranquil goes into detail about how horrible their existence is. So, yeah. I think... Oh, wow. Um, I think Harrow, like, breaks down and starts crying and, like, grabbing at your hand and begging you not to cut it off. Like, don't cut me off from it, please, anything. Just don't cut it off from me. I need it. I need it to go on, please. Yeah. Um, and I think she pats your cheek again, because she's seen that in... But and then she goes, Rue, get him, and sends him at the the pride demon because of a bari, it doesn't work even of superior scale. Essentially, he he will panic them for a short time. So it is my only chance to get Gunter and the others back into play here. Absolutely. Okay, and uh, I'm going to say as a result of the inner conflict. For Harrow, Harrow, you feel the old god shift and, and turn, and they say, it will have to be her that sacrificed or you. You don't have to make that choice now. Cool. You know, no big deal. You got you got XP from that though, so you know. So probably I'll be fine or something, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You'll be fine. <laughs> absolutely. All right. So Rue, you're going to send your I'm going to send Rue in because I need because Rue will take no will take no hesitation in this moment. Yeah, yeah. I've seen I've seen the Mabari take on like brood mothers and, and demons and origin, so he can totally handle this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, so you're I going to- doing this. So essentially when I engage in combat or deal with troops, um, I can always choose to cause the enemy to panic for a short time, even against foes of a superior scale. Oh, oh. Um, but I also Christine, take plus one. But Christine did bring down the scale. So the pride demon is now oh. of your scale. Actually. Oh, well, that's awesome. So then, um, okay, so then I, but I don't think it would never occur to me to have Rue actually tear into a demon. That seems horrible. Uh, well, just he, he's fighting alongside you, so. Okay. You know, it could be the both of you. So the two of us? Yeah, there's All like right. this slow motion moment from like when, after you touch Howard's cheek, you stand up and gather the power around you. All right. Um, okay. Then, oh, wow, I look around and I'm going to give Haro back what I inadvertently took to from him, that, that distance. I'm going to take that, like, let that close again, but I'm going to use the snap back to essentially fire back at this pride demon. So essentially I'm using the energy of the bond between Haro and the old God to 
shoot a bolt of of energy through this pride demon. Perfect, perfect. All right, let's see how it goes. Okay. Fine, just use my soul as a crossbow. I'm sure it won't have any repercussions. She's doing exactly what you asked. She's letting you have it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna write this down. Use my soul as a crossbow. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> it seems very, very tightly strung, <laughs> so. You're not wrong. I'm rolling. I'm adding, I think, three. So, whoops. Right, with your Mabari. Nice. I rolled a nine. That gives me a 12. <gasps> Amazing. Perfect, Whoa. perfect. Okay, so, wow, so badass. Okay, uh, so on a 10 plus, you win the conflict. You may mark XP. Oh, if you show mm -hmm. mercy or let them escape. Oh. Uh, and you may declare a shift in the fiction, a change of heart, impress someone, shift an entanglement. Um, Letting a pride demon escape, I feel like completely changes the, the yeah. I mean, you can do it, you know, I'm just saying. I, I don't think, I think there's that thing is when she releases it, it also releases her hold on the, on the fade, right? And so essentially she has flung him back in um, and he's just, that's it. So she has let him go. She hasn't destroyed him. She's just completely flung him back far away and outside of the thing. Um, and so I'll take that uh, XP and I can declare a change. Um, let's say that when I do that, that old god that's in Harrow introduces himself to me. How's that? Yeah, yeah. How do we feel about that, Harrow? That's interesting. I don't think you guys heard me, but I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I heard that. <laughs> oh, you, you too. I, I saw that. You, you strategically muted me. <laughs> didn't. That is you muting yourself. Yes, Merlin. So, I need, to, I need to meet Merlin also. If that's okay, it's just that thing that she sort of has a sense of who, what he is. Yeah, and so um, when that happens, all that power gathered around you, and you force the pride demon back, and there's this burning veil fire of green all around the demon, uh, as all of that energy from Harrow's, from the tension in Harrow's soul, just like cuts through the veil like so quickly uh, with surgical precision. And the demon gets flung in. And at that moment, you sense this ancient entity reach out towards your mind. And you hear many, many voices coming together uh, before settling down into one voice. And uh, they say, we have been waiting for you for a long, long time. Wait, what? Waiting for me? They've and been the waiting for me for a long time. <laughs> and then they say, you must protect Harrow at all costs. All right. And uh, there's this, there's this way. The weird thing is that when they talk to you, Eilis, it's like, like they're familiar with you. It's like the way a friend would talk to an old friend. Hmm. Um, and I think, yeah, and I think that she says, just as long as you don't let it go silent again. I think when you say that there's a there's this strange pause and then there is a if you insist that you are ready for your destiny then we will not stop you and i think on that note we'll take our first break <laughs> and i'll see you all in is five minutes okay or or do we want a longer break 
Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, see everybody in five. Okay, and we're back from our break. Uh, I'm so distracted by my cat, I forgot. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we ended with the pride demon getting flung back into the veil. Uh, I think at this point, are we okay with fast forwarding? Uh, like a little later, let's say we're towards the end of our journey. It's been uh, a few, I actually don't know how long it takes for a ship to, uh, reach all the way to live I was about to say a few days, but I think it would take more, uh, let's say a week or two. Yeah. My default, whenever I say ship travel is it takes about two weeks. Yeah, I think that's Regardless smart. of distance, that's what I say. <laughs> that's smart, that's smart. Let's say it takes two weeks. So, so uh, what I'd like from everybody, uh, we'll go around uh, just to check in, like how did you spend those two weeks? Uh, some of you also have moves where you can gain bonds in between scenes, so this is a good time to do so. Uh, but I think let's start with, uh, I mean, Gunter like is, is blocked by Merlin, but, uh, but how does Gunter spend the two weeks? What do we see of him? Oh, you're muted, my love. For the first half of the journey, I'm sure uh, Gunter would spend some of his time sort of like uh, licking his wounds, you know, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but at the same time, um, he's also like weighing what the what the pride demon said. I mean, the pride demon's out there, right? So, um, and he he has taken with him on this trip. Oh my God, that's so much cat fur. Um, he's taken with him on this trip a, a series of books that to sort of like to continue to study and be. Um, I should say this to make sure that he's memorized and remembers like stuff about demons, the Maleficarum, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, even though he plays sort of, even though his job is, or his his duties are, you know, very combat and, you know, kill demons or yet that he also tries to be at least knowledgeable about them on a practical level. Yeah. That makes sense. And so, uh... Let's see. And also, uh, I realize like you have only one approach mark, but um, one of the things you can do in between scenes, you can narrate a montage covering how your character recovers, such as meditation, medicine, study. Uh, I put your imbibing lyrium. I don't think it was originally imbibing lyrium. I think it was alcohol originally. Anyway, <laughs> imbibing lyrium or potions and clear an approach without rolling. Do you want to do that or are you okay with uh, leaving that mark, that approach? I mark? think uh, he doesn't let anyone notice, but uh, meditation is, I think, a part of his rituals. So he definitely, um, um, yeah, uh, centers himself through the practice to clear uncertain. Yeah, and I think uh, every once in a while, you trying to, uh, <laughs> you focus on meditation, but Rue will show up once in a while to interrupt the meditation and lick your <laughs> face. Like, oh, you're not busy, so pay attention to me. <laughs> and, and, I, and I welcome the, I welcome the distraction. Every time Rue comes in, like, you know, I always have room in my heart for, for, for Rue. <laughs> I think there are times you're focusing and then you just hear, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and clear uh, the approach. And I always have food for him. <laughs> oh, perfect. Mabari crunches. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. I, I just started having to make those again the other day. <laughs> we were making them. Oh, in the game. I thought you meant Me cooking. cooking in real life. Uh, okay, anyway. So. <laughs> we don't want to poison us, right? Okay. Uh, and then... Next, uh, I want to ask uh, Ilis, you know, because we, we see Rue come back to you. What have you been mm -hmm. doing for the past two weeks? Um, I think one of the things that she's done is gone back and apologized to Haro because when she cast that magic, she goes, I did not realize how it would affect you. I am sorry to have pushed that particular silence onto you. You would appreciate that not happening again. It was uncomfortable. 
I, I haven't been without them in, well, in a long time. How long have you been with them? I don't think about it much. Years, I think. Was it your choice? Yes, yes. I remember that. It was, it was better than what was. I'm sorry. I'm not. It's been better since then. I will not use those particular tactics in your vicinity again. Or at least give me time to run, maybe. All right. That seems reasonable. It feels like we were also trying to comfort and support, maybe, here. Okay. Yes. So, roll. I will add stone, which is focus and presence. I'm adding one. Ugh, but it was a four. This is terrible. Okay. That poison of. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's how it all goes in Eilis's head, and instead she just walks up and slaps Harrow. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Work XC, work XC first. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say, <laughs> um, you know, I'll I'll ask instead uh, as you're as you're trying to reach out to. Uh, to Harrow. Mm. How does Christine distract you instead? Like you're in the middle of this moment, you're you're in one of the, wow, ship terms are difficult. Uh, those those uh, it's, ship it's, rooms. It's one of those stupid things. She's like playing mumbly peg, you know, and she does the thing where she, um, where She's doing it really fast and then she flings the, the knife off because she almost stabs her finger, you know, so she sort of stabs it off. And there's that thing where the knife lands just out, you know, like outside the sort of doorway that we're by. And then she comes by and she bends over to pick it up and she sort of looks in and does it high. <laughs> It's just one of those things where it's like... It does this sound like something Cassie would do? <laughs> and check. Like a <laughs> trying to think, the the disaster lesbian equivalent of like, hey, um, <laughs> is what I'm thinking. But I want to check it with Lowell. Does that make sense yeah. for for what Christine would do? All good with me. <laughs> and you can do. And when that happens, uh, you just hear Rue beside you going, like that's kind of unhappy. <laughs> Making his opinion though. <laughs> well, I should go. <laughs> I'll leave quickly there. Oh, I, I, um, all right. And, the, and, uh, right. Harrow, Rue Ru gives you this really like, like they, they pity you kind of look, like they look back <laughs> and give you this face of like, hmm, before following after. I'll, I'll give Rue a little ear scratch before before they trot off. Ah, yeah, immediately pricks up, like boom, like a little tail wags again, uh, and I think uh, they leave behind. Like it looks like it used to be a dog toy of some kind, but it's been chewed past the point of recognition. Ooh. You're not sure what it is, but he leaves it for you as a gift before he trots oh, off. Oh, that's sweet. Is, is it like still sort of slimy and drippy? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, that means it's a beloved gift. Yes, yes, so exactly. That's, it's not just like the extra bone, it's like the good bone. Yeah, that's true, that's exactly, true. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Uh, but Castine, are you going to let Eilis just walk away or? 
are you are you distracted by someone else? I think I let I let's go. I still have to figure out how to handle that particular situation. Uh, it said my time spent with some of the 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 fellows, the crew that I have brought with me, and we we go to our our private cabin and we sit around and I put the brazier on and drop some things in there and we sit in the hot box in there with some uh, smoke and uh, 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 use that to unwind and talk about the passion demon and like, how could we have handled that better? Could we have? Is that the, it's really weird because here we're going to this barbaric land. There's probably demons around every corner judging by what we've seen so far. Uh, you know how it is. So we just got to be ready for that kind of thing. And we'll, we'll, we'll brainstorm for a while about that, you know, and then, then we'll just kind of get, oh man, I'm hungry now. We'll break into <laughs> like the, 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 the dried <laughs> apples and stuff. That's a hot box indeed. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, I, I would like to do that to clear my, uh, my blood. And you can also take a bond with them if you like. That's part Absolutely. of your mercenary captain move. The finest weed in the Shire. My <laughs> team. And so when that happens, uh, when you're in the middle of trying to figure out what to eat um, afterwards, uh, your sister, Genevieve, comes by. And uh, she looks a little... How can you tell that your sister is like concerned with something? Like what, what is usually a telltale sign? That she doesn't immediately comment on the sheer amount of smoke in the room. <laughs> like she lets it slide. Doesn't yeah. Even, doesn't even uh, talk about and it. And I'll, I'll do uh... that and dismiss the people to, and uh, Genevieve, what's, uh, what's the matter? I, let me, let me pour you a drink here. Of course, of course. And she actually takes the drink. You know that she normally politely declines with a lot of judgment on her face, and but she I, actually- And I go, like, you didn't check that for poison. What's the matter? And her face just sort of like pales for a moment. And she, <laughs> she like presses it down. She's even, goddamn our lesions, they're all used to it. Uh, and so she looks at you and she says, you heard, but what the demon said about Eyeless, didn't you? I heard some magical talk. I I don't think I'd put two and two together about uh, everything, but uh, Eyeless is uh, uh, they're one of the ones you worked on. Yes, she's dangerous. And drawing demons of that power to her, we have to do something about it, sister. Do we? You say we, I hope that's the royal we of, of you taking charge of the matter and not thinking that you're gonna wrap me up in fixing your particular problems. And uh, she lets out this big sigh. You always had to be the selfish prick between the two of us. This also concerns you. This will also affect your mission. How so? And then she kind of has this face of like, she's already said too much and she's getting up to leave. Do you want to try to stop her before she does? No, I think what I want to do is I want to wound her. True sister, yes. And I think I say, I understand, I understand. So she's dangerous, is what you're saying to me? Just so I have this right? She nods, looking at you like, why are you so agreeable? I say, it seems to me that uh, she's dangerous and, and, and she's only that way because someone failed at what they tried to do before. And she, there's a moment where she's too still and that's how you know that you got through to her. And she just walks away on, turns on her heel. Say very loudly, oh, here's where I put the dried apples.
Exactly. Uh, and so the last question I have for you, Christine, is who in your team is secretly a mage? Uh, let me get a good, what, D D Dragon Age has a weird mix of things. So I think a uh, Benedictus. Ooh, nice. Good name. Good name. Okay. I'll write that down at NPC. And, and I think they're actually from mm -hmm. over here and escape from a circle. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, they're, they're one of the people who has some knowledge, but we've made them up to look very you know, uh, from the other land, so they won't mm. be recognizable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, he doesn't look for Eldon. Doesn't look for Eldon. No. All right. We've we've washed him. <laughs> yeah, it took several baths, but it was yeah. done. And now he yeah. definitely didn't look for Eldon. <laughs> okay, I think I have a. I think I have an image for that. But feel free, feel free to change it. Uh, this looks suspiciously mage-like. How did I live before Pinterest? I love Pinterest so much. I used to, I used to print out pictures, and I have stacks and stacks of pictures I printed out on color printers from before we had Pinterest. Sherry oh, was yeah. telling me that you just got a deck printed right before the end times. No, I got three <gasps> decks printed, multiple ones for all the players to have copies of the, for each of the games. Terrible. Just such a good so idea. So that is a that. brilliant picture. Benedictus is awesome. Yeah. What a okay. great pick. Ooh, ooh, I should share it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here we go. Yeah, yeah. Just looks yeah, like I love I love you know, I love the pictures, babe. Thank you. I I've been training with Sherry. We have been yeah. we, in all yeah, our you know, <laughs> But you know, I could get a really Pinterest boot camp. <laughs> yeah, it's you true. know, I can get a really freaking nitpicky, right? Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. I understand though. But yeah, very good, very good. Okay, and then uh, as we cut to so Harrow, you you were left with that uh, with that gift. But time passes. How do you spend your time in the two weeks before you arrive? Um, I, I think things were obviously awkward with Castine, and and now things are are fairly awkward with Eilis as well. So, I think Harrow is spending a lot of the time like desperately trying to avoid them, which is not an easy feat on an enclosed boat altogether. Um, so I think he's taken to like helping with the sailors on deck and getting them to show him some of the rigging stuff. And if he can be like up in the ropes and amongst the sails, then he doesn't have to worry about what he's going to suddenly blurt out at people. Um, sure. So yeah, I, I think I think he's just sort of trying to refine his center and and get back on on solid footing with people by just giving it some space and time, um, trying to to clear a clear a condition that way. Yeah, absolutely. It feels like that's the case. So, which one do you clear? Um. So that wouldn't really fit my fate, but we'll, we'll clear blood. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So as the days pass though, Harrow, what is it that Genevieve does that makes you even more suspicious about her? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you do suspect that she's working with demons or is possessed by one. So what is it that happens? Um. I think she keeps going down to the cargo hold, which I mean, wouldn't be too off in and of itself, but she keeps doing it at the same time every day. Like she'll leave what she's doing if she's involved with something else to go down to the cargo hold at the same time every day. 
And then right before the end of your journey, there's a moment when you see her walk into the cargo hold, same time as always. And she walks back out, exactly the same amount of time has passed. But a minute later, and you're sure of this, you know that you didn't imagine it. You see her leave the cargo hold again, even though you didn't see her enter it a second time. It's a glitch in the matrix. <laughs> I think we'll, we can refashion it too. There's a tear in the veil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. That makes, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> same thing, your same voice thing. over recording. <laughs> perfect, perfect. It's one of those where the shot's behind his head, so you can't see his lips moving. So they can make him say anything when they want to. You saw a whole video essay about how that works, and I was so mortified. Oh, what is the movie? <laughs> uh, I'll remember it later came out last year and it was such a mess okay um but yeah are you going to try to figure out what's going on with genevieve or are you going to leave it for now um uh, no i i think if there are two of them that's enough to break through even harrow's level of like normal weirdness it's a high baseline <laughs> um yeah, let's see. Uh, like, would you like to study? Would you like to hearts and minds? Would you like to? Uh, I think maybe study. Um, you know, uh, Genevieve is related to Castine, so going into any sort of verbal interaction unprepared would be really dangerous. These are lesions. Terrible to talk to. <laughs> Just a question of scale, that's all. <laughs> um so, uh, 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 patience curiosity i've been sort of watching her habits this whole time i, I think i can roll with wild to study her um yeah i guess i i'll i'll follow number two around Let's see if I can figure out where, where it's going. Because if number one came out when I expected her to come out, so I'm going to choose this one as the weird one. Some hands, some hands here. Some stuff. Oh, that's 12. Excellent, excellent. I, You know what? I'm not going to say anything. Uh, GM should not talk about rules. <clears throat> so... Um, <laughs> You get to, uh, oh, I should say this out loud for the people listening or watching. When you study something in order to learn about the world or establish new facts, roll on a hit, you gain basic information. On a 10 plus, you also get to hold. So what is the basic question that you'd like me to answer before you decide how to spend your hold? Um, and how close to, to landing is this? I'd say from this moment, it's it's just half a day out. Gotcha. Um, how's this one acting weird? Not like Genevieve. This Genevieve is a lot more personable, a lot kinder, a lot friendlier. The other one's a little standoffish. Um, very. Orlesian. Yeah, yeah, and this one. <laughs> so friendly it's it's really you see her like even talking to the crew like they're equals and she's spending a lot of time with uh nadine in particular the first mate gotcha okay uh so for my first one um what are she and Nadine talking about? Like, can I overhear some bit of their conversation? Well, it's less talking. Um, you know, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of like quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of energy. <laughs> so 
time, right? Wow, here we have played so many games attention. already, and and that's the first time she's ever commented. <laughs> it's true. Oh, she's mouthy normally. I'm sort of surprised. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there's definitely um, a form of tension between oh, the two. Oh, 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 um, uh, uh, I wasn't, I was just going over that one awkwardly back up and away and they looked like he was never in the area. They're, they're, they're really uh, occupied with each other. <laughs> so how do you want to spend um, your second hold? I think for my second one, I'm going to say that as she's being so friendly and affable and going from person to person, it it takes a while for me to notice. Like it takes a couple people for me to notice, but she keeps uh, like part of it is that she keeps clapping people like on the the back of the shoulder in a sort of like jovial, friendly, laughing way. Uh, but it keeps being in the same place and there's it's almost like is there something weird on her hand because it's almost like she's leaving a discolored handprint on their clothing after she touches them there oh i like that so revealing a detail that she's marking them in some way mm -hmm. perfect perfect and there's one moment when you catch it you're sure of it and she turns around to look at you straight in the eye before she smiles <laughs> yes, and it was sort of like not. Hey, hi, and I was, I was going. Oh no, no, wait, I was going this way. Arrow, wasn't it? Uh, yes, um, Gen Gen Genevieve, right? Your your um, you know, Castine's um, your Genevieve. Right, right, and so she comes closer, and there's something about the hint of lavender around her and she smiles you know i do like it when i'm being watched oh i wasn't i mean i was just looking for the galley oh no 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 i wasn't talking about you you weren't watching me were you what no that's why i said no Who's watching? Who was watching you? We must get to the bottom of this. Someone else watching you. Oh, it's so delightful to see you leave to my defense. And, uh, and she smiles, comes closer, places. She places a hand on your cheek. And it's very different from the way Isla does it. <laughs> Bye. Matthew's I, making a lot of sounds behind the mute button. <laughs> <laughs> um, I what what do you what do you, what did you mean? Who's been watching you? And she comes in closer. I can trust you, can't I, Harrow? Of of course, yes, obviously. And she says, it's the captain, the canary. You know, we can't trust those ogres. And I have to point out, this is absolutely like a racist thing to say to compare a canary to a, you know, a horrendous monster creature, so. Ah, uh, gotcha. Well. And ogres do exist in Dragon Age, so they are comparing them to something. It's not an, an expression. <laughs> gotcha. Um, well, I trust her as far as we've paid her, we've hired her for service. But, you know, they scare me, Haro. And she starts making that um, 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 kind of voice. And she places a finger on your shoulder. You can check in on them for me, can't you? I'm, I'm sure if if you've been worried if it would put your mind at ease excellent I, thank you so much i knew you could handle it you're such a darling and she does that really disgusting orlesian double kiss you know uh from cheek to cheek and and he's like confusedly trying to follow he doesn't quite un, sort of bumps four heads at one point the boss is gagging 
Um, sure, I no, just 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 don't don't worry about this. I'll I'll look into it. I'm sure, I'm sure there's nothing going on, but if there is, I, I, I'll I'll let you. But there's not, obviously. Absolutely, it would put my mind at ease. Since I know that you'll handle this perfectly, I'll I'll give you your payment right now. And she starts to attach this beautiful bracelet uh, around your wrist. It's made of very rare bloodstone. Uh, pay, pay what? No, I please no. It's it's not. You don't have to pay me. I'm just as a fellow traveling companion and friend of your sisters. Oh, no, 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 no. I wouldn't hear of it. I'm asking a great favor from you. Thank you, darling. And she's already moving away. Like, she's not going to listen to what you're going to say in response. Oh, um, okay. I, I guess, wow. Okay, so I need to go look in on the... Wait, what happened? And then you hear the old god sigh. <sighs> <laughs> She was very confusing. Uh. <laughs> so uh, time has passed and we arrive uh, at our destination. And so when you reach for Alden, uh, Castine, it's even worse than you thought it would be. The weather is just terrible here. Um, I don't understand Western weather, so let's just <laughs> insert horrible Western weather. Uh, it is well, wet I, and rainy. I it is what, yeah, sorry. Whatever. It is wet and rainy and clammy and warm at the same yeah. time. It's like oh, humid and rainy. You yeah, whenever I see the uh, Dragon Age Origins, like it always looks like it rains in Freldom, but also it's always muddy. And that's why it's always muddy. That's why the ground is always just looks like mud constantly. And I imagine the side effect of that is that it makes the place very humid. And that doesn't even mean, that mean that the place is cold. So imagine, babe, all that rain, that mud, that humidity just coming together. So we arrive at the Storm Coast, basically, is what is what you're telling me. Storm Coast always looks kind of cold to me, whereas this is going to be more. Yeah. Oh, maybe more and this, wood? Yeah, and the Storm Coast, the, the ground is a little bit more dry as well. Mm, okay, so Crestwood makes sense. Yeah, 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 Crestwood. Yeah, so we arrive at Crestwood. Uh, it is, as you say, rainy, humid, uh, absolutely disgusting. It's been uh, a while. Uh, all of you have heard the rumors that Crestwood was overrun uh, with the undead uh, some time back. Uh, some of you probably know more than others, uh, but basically it's a very simple town. There are, the population is very, very small. Uh, they're also still recovering from the blight that happened uh, several years ago where uh, the dark spawn invaded from uh, the wilds down below. Uh, but you're brought in, there is uh, a very simple, tavern would be generous uh but it's an establishment a uh, drinking place <laughs> a drinking place yes yes indeed uh there's a small chantry nearby very humble uh it's there are only like a few dozen people at most you can see like a lot of houses have been abandoned there's this entire area that's overgrown uh because it used to be flooded for several years. So it's just covered in seaweed and barnacles. They haven't been able to like clear out the place, uh, but that place is completely abandoned. You're only brought to what's left of the village here in Crestwood. Uh, the tavern is very new, recently put up. Uh, it's a dwarf that greets you. It's strange to see a dwarf out here. They normally don't like uh, the cold that you should gravitate towards warmer weather, uh, but uh, she's here to greet you and uh, she has that kind of habit where she sounds happy to see you, but she keeps frowning all the time. Like there's this weird disconnect between the tone of her voice and the expression on her face. Uh, but you're all ushered in. Uh, but so uh, I know that two of you 
have an appointment to attend to or, or something of that kind for Castillan and for Harrow. In fact, Harrow, you were so distracted. Um, oh, I want to ask you, uh, Harrow, you know that you had to be at a certain place at a certain time and you weren't sure if you were going to make it on time even. Mm -hmm. um, how do you know that the old God is feeling restless within you? What does that feel like usually? Or how does it manifest? Um, I, I think it shows up in the weather a lot. Um, I, I think like the last couple of days of our journey, there have been squalls and storms with like unpredictable winds, but always winds that were pushing us in the direction we needed to go. Um, and, and now that we've uh, hit land, it's this like tense boiling storm up in the clouds that won't quite break. Like it's just more and more humidity and more and more electricity in the air and it just won't give in. Absolutely. And you can hear this rumbling of many voices. They're almost like, they're not quite harmonizing like they usually do, but you hear several voices at different times saying, now, we have to go now, now. We're close to missing it, now. But you have to bring that one with you. No, not her, yes, her. And they all say at the same time, Castine. Yes. Uh, hi, uh, Kessine. Hello. Hi. Yes. So now that we're, the ship is uh, docked and we're off the ship, we're off the ship, the ship's over there and we're here now with all of the stuff because it's docked. Um, and it's just, I was wondering if you would like to go for a walk over that way, I think, for, no, that way. Thank you. I have a business I have to attend to. <laughs> no, it's just you see that there's um it's very important that yeah, yeah, it's that way. It's that way. It's just I need you to come with me while I walk that way. We're going to meet someone. You like people. Estine Narell comes by and she looks a little worried. She leans in and she whispers, Captain. That's mm -hmm. the same direction we're supposed to go in for the job. Oh, Is this well, some weird magic shit again? It's weird magic shit. But uh, why don't you tell me exactly what's going on, Harrow, and perhaps I'll go with you. Well, if I knew exactly... Um, well, stop, you see, there's... stop, stop, stop. In your plainest language, tell me what has driven you to require me to go with you on this walk over there? What is, what is the nature of this? If you can't answer that simple question, then there's no reason why I should go with you. The myriad thousand voices of the ancient spirit gods ring in my head that there is one that we must meet over there soon before the storm breaks. See, was that so hard? <laughs> Okay. Um, Certainly. They really Hold are. on. Let me gather my mercenary company. Oh, <laughs> Snap my handy. fingers. And those people who are on deck kind of fall in around. <laughs> Why don't you come with us over there? Okay. But as long as we're just very, That's yes, we're pointing. going. We're going exactly. soon. No, exactly. I, I got her to say yes. No, it's all right. Yes. You come by yourself with us over there. Let's go. Good. Okay. Yes. This has worked out well for all of us, hasn't it? I were being very cooperative. They're, these are all, the whole time, these were all with you. They're the ones who were shooting at the, the, the demon. Yeah, no, I just thought you were really charismatic and good at leading people. Oh, I am that as well. <laughs> but let's go. Let's go. Let's talk more walk. Uh, yes, okay, we're going. 
do we have to do we have to uh, 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 pull in anyone else's fates into our weave here? Or are we good? Uh, no, no. Uh, apparently, we're good. Bye bye. Let's go. And uh, as as the group is leaving, uh, Gunter. What is it that brings <laughs> you to Crestwood in the first place? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just so overwhelmed by what just happened. Uh, no worries. Um, actually, I want to explore the, the, the story point of what the pride demon said about Eilis, something about the, 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 the child of sin or something. I'm not sure if I got it correctly. Oh, I didn't say Chad is dead, but you know, I'm gonna add that now. <laughs> what? No, wait, whoa. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alice. <laughs> it, it has been typed in. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> no, really, what is it? I can delete it if you like. I just like that term. Uh, but basically, the Pride Demon wanted uh, Ilus and bring her back with her, uh, bring her back with him to. To the fate. Yeah. No, I think us were us were you know uh, disembarking. No, as as the sh as the ship pulls into Crestwood Bay, Crestwood Harbor, um, I would say that uh, um, Gunter was balancing on the ropes that the, the rigging. So just again, he is obsessively like uh, training or obsessively keeping himself in sh in, in top form. And as um, Isla sort of exits her cabin. That's when he jumps off the ropes, you know, lands and proceeds to walk with her uh, and asks Eilis if, she, you know, I ask you, uh, Sherry or Eilis, if you knew anything about what the pride demon was talking about. Was there something your Templar friend mentioned before Eilis or is there something else? Oh, you mean me? No, 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 I'm talking to Eilis. Yeah, OK. I think she stops and she goes, he said favorite of the spirits? I, I'm not sure. I, I know that there was a spirit that lifted the tranquility. Perhaps he meant that. Mm -hmm. But that seems unusual to me. I mean. Uh, well, Rue found the spirit. Who can refuse Rue, right? That's true. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, and I'm just trying to get a, a, a sense of like, uh, I don't know what the rather move is, but trying to get a sense of uh, what the spirits or what the what what de what danger or destiny lies before Eilis, I guess. Yeah, it could be study, or you could seek a magical expert uh, because we've stolen moves from the supernatural place of the hearts of Ulin. Uh, so if you want to do that, uh, Gunter, we could say that there's someone here at the tavern maybe who could help you if you would like to do that, or you could do the study move. Um, but I feel like it might make more sense to seek someone out who might know the answers. Sure. Um, is it is it a little bit too much if I do both? Like, let's let's do it. Study here, here in the now, like the study, and then I'll seek an expert uh, later in the in the session as we go through our actions in the tavern, uh, or or next session probably. Or next session. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm okay with that. It's just that I'm thinking, because with your background as a rogue duelist, I don't know how much you could pick up. Just studying. I know you've been reading the books, as you said. Um, All right. Uh, I can, can I, uh, the word, I defer to your judgment and your, you know, as a GM, as GM and we'll just go with the uh, seeking out an expert. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like maybe we should, I'm just going to pin this. I'm going to say, because uh, we're getting close to our time, uh, to the time, but we'll say, uh huh. I don't want to keep this interesting by saying it's like when 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 Eilis responds that way, you know, I say, like, um, well, if you don't know, then, which is uh, worry not, 
um, which is, I will try to find out everything I can. And, you know, I, um, Gunter says that with like a lot of like concern and maybe just a hint of affection towards Eilis. Ooh. And that, I think Alice is be cautious. People do not trust mages or friends of mages. You may make your life harder for yourself. Mm. Gunter, are you trying to comfort <clears throat> or support Eilis? I am trying to. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, comfort or support, definitely. Sorry, I I read that as a question as am I gonna comfort or support, but I realized that's the same move. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I think I think the way Gunder sees the situation is that he understands that mages and magic have wronged a lot of people in this world. And even though Eilis probably doesn't see it that way, being tranquil and all, Gunther does like it's sort of like drawn to this sort of this tragic case of someone who is so beautiful and is so talented, like being robbed of her of her emotions and her personality was tranquil. Yeah. So let's see. What oh, approach yeah, are you going to use? <laughs> uh, uh, the approach I'm going to use will be, Merlin, don't, don't sit on the keyboard. Um, I sit where I want. I think, it, I think there's a case of fate then. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, shall I roll with fate or? or yeah, or? absolutely. All right, um, creating a role. Excuse me, Merlin, I need to type the word fade. Done, creating the role. Oh, thanks for scrolling, Merlin. Uh, we've got a nine. Ooh, nice. Okay, so uh, on a nine, um, on a hit, you lift them up. They may choose to give you a bond with them or clear. Ooh, ooh, I forgot to change this word. Uh, da, 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 da. Or clear a marked approach. Mm, so I choose or is, they choose? Oh, they choose. OK, cool, cool, cool. Uh, her trust in Gunter will deepen. She will take two odds with Gunter. All right, nice. Okay, and so uh, as that happens, that's when the door to the tavern suddenly opens with a crack of lightning from behind. And there's the sound of a staff uh, hitting the ground for a moment. And there is this deep feminine voice from the doorway that says, well, 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 what do we have here? And that's where we're going to end the session. All right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so uh, we'll do our Stars and Wishes off recording. But for everyone who is listening or watching, thank you so much. I had so much fun playing Dragon Age RPG. <laughs> so good. <laughs> uh, this is a I, I just want to say it's a juicy app. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Which is because the system that it's built on is uh, creates juicy narrative. So, uh, but yeah, so we'll see everybody next time. Thank you so much for listening or watching. Bye. <laughs>